lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I'm Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? We're Doing back. Right. <laughs> yeah, we're back. <laughs> we we kind of we kind of missed a week, but sort of. Um, we could consider this part of the week within which we said that we would record. Yeah. Sort of. We're we're within a week from when we from said when we, we last recorded. Hey. No, 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 that's not true. <laughs> oh yeah. Well wait, what's what is today? Today's Tuesday. Yeah. We didn't record in the week of last like Monday through Sunday, but we said we'd be back, you know, the end of last week. And it's within a week of that. Hey, so there you go. <laughs> so Mike doing the math for us. Yeah. <laughs> And and Liberty Larry had a dentist appointment today, so for the for once I'll be doing most of the talking. Yeah. And uh, and you <laughs> you got not a real drink. Yeah, it's late. We're gonna late start tonight. Yeah, it's well, it's the only time that <laughs> this was probably our best opportunity to. Record. It, it really was. Like I don't know the rest. I, I know you're you've got stuff going on all week, mm-hmm. as do I. It's just. We're busy yeah. people. What yeah. can we say? <laughs> I've been really busy at the office, and um, I got family stuff also that's uh, yeah. demanding some of my time. Yeah. So, yeah, such as such as life. We're, but we're here though. Yep. We've and I've got a glass sure. of whiskey. I had cheap dinner, and I've got cheap whiskey. And yeah. um, but it's <laughs> good whiskey. Running with a theme tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Don't be surprised if you ever buy the Evan Williams single barrel. Yeah. Which is a cheap bottle of whiskey. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. It's not like the depth of flavor isn't quite what you would want. Like it's a little thin. A little off, yeah. But I mean it's better than buying like Jack Daniels or yeah. something. Well, and for how much that bottle will run you? Like twenty five bucks. Twenty five bucks, yeah. Hey, there you go. Kind of like the Ritten House that we talked about. Oh that yeah, nah, that's actually like really good whiskey. That's though. a really good whiskey, <laughs> and like that's a twenty dollar bottle or something. Like, yeah, it's twenty three, I think. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Well, the price keeps rising because not because of inflation, obviously. <laughs> oh, there is no inflation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, we've got that well under control. Yet for some reason, the things that I know how much they cost two years ago cost ten, fifteen percent more now. Yeah, and but I work in retail. Surely that's not inflation. And I can tell you, not only is on a lot of products, at least, not only is the price going up, but the uh, content is getting smaller. <laughs> like everything's shrinking, and the price is going up. So, well, call that what you will. Maybe that's not inflation. Maybe that's like, I don't know. What would you call a product getting smaller? <laughs> that's, um, that's deflation. <laughs> deflation of the product and inflation of the cost. Hey, there you go. Uh, yep. Well, I don't know how we avoid um, talking about the election still. Well, it's, it's been called. It, it has by been the press. By the press. That's they, that's. I mean, that is that's not insignificant. I mean, it it is important. I mean, it, they play a role. I mean, yeah. Ma- maybe not. A, maybe they play more of a role than they should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The the role's supposed to be reporting, not, not deciding. Deciding. Yeah. But um, I mean, you still have the official. I mean, all the delegates still have to cast their ballots and do all of that end of it. Right. So I mean, we'll see how that all of that plays out. I I see no reason to believe that that all won't go as planned and scheduled. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know that all does. I mean, that's the official part of having it done so yeah um i was a little surprised at how several of those states flipped um and you know days after the election yeah uh with tens of thousands of votes suddenly um they're okay so i i don't know the fraud will ever be proven on this and but there's another part of this which i think like some people are really sticking their head in the sand about this yeah um i actually heard a a commentator the other day on some news program i don't remember which say something like um you're more likely to get to uh get struck by lightning after surviving a plane crash than there's any fraud in this election or oh, something man. like that. Like, whoa. Now that's like, I wouldn't say that about any election. Yeah. Like, I, period. I was like, what kind of ridiculous statement is that? In like, any country. Every election has fraud in yes, it. I'm there's, there's no 100% question. certain. Yeah. Um, and just like you said, on both sides, like it's not like it's unique to one side. No, no. Um, But to say that there's no, I mean... 
the way the bat with so many mail-in ballots and the mm-hmm. way it was handled in a lot of states, I mean, I I have to believe there's at least some level of fraud. Now, what, yeah. was it enough to flip things? Maybe, but maybe not. I mean, I, there's no way for me to know. Mm-hmm. You know. I don't remember which ones, but I know that there, there's several countries in Europe that don't do mail-in ballots because of the the opportunity for, for fraud. fraud. Yeah. Um, and honestly, that's I think that's a good way to do it. I mean, I, as long as it's a solicited ballot where you ask for it, they send it to you and then you send it back. Mm-hmm. I don't and it gets there by election day. I don't so much have a problem with it as far as like what my beliefs are on it. Yeah. But at the same but that's not what they were doing in a lot no, of these no. places. Like that's that's not what this was. Yeah. Well, like, they were sending out ballots to everybody on the voter rolls. Yeah. And I I mean in this state, they do purge voter rolls. Yeah. Um, but a lot of states, they don't. Yeah. And so you could have moved, you could have died, you could have, I mean, my... All kinds so of things, yeah. I, I have a, a cousin in um, that lives in Perth, Australia. And uh, she hasn't lived in the U.S. in more than a decade. Um, she <laughs> might have been to the U.S., <laughs> Maybe. Uh, in the last decade, <laughs> yeah. might have, yeah. um, but she still votes in U.S. elections. <laughs> she holds dual citizenship, and she still votes in U.S. Yeah. elections. That's crazy, though. Like that doesn't seem yeah. like it makes sense. Like, yeah, that. why should she get a vote here? All right, no, no offense, Carrie, but yeah, but still, though, like, <laughs> I mean, like, come on, guys, like, <laughs> she used to listen to the podcast. I don't know, she still does. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it it. And obviously there, there's been lots and lots of reports and I don't know one way or the other. I don't have any, any proof. Um, but there's been lots and lots of reports of, um, dead people casting ballots and, um, you know, people casting multiple ballots and, uh, ballots being cast for people that moved years before and all kinds of stuff. And there's always some of that, but with this election in particular, it seems like it was ramped up. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of fishy situations. Yeah. Um, and, but yet somehow but, the mainstream media is still out there saying that there's no evidence of fraud which, in which is this. what like, kills okay. the credibility of the mainstream media so much because like anybody with two eyes is going to know that there's at least some level of corruption, like I say, from either side. So for the mainstream media to be so hardcore in the camp of, this is an absolute good election, blah, mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. It just feeds the conspiracy theories that, you know, because for them to be so in that tank just feeds the other side all yeah. more ammo. It makes the other side even more believable, honestly. Well, I mean, this is, a bunch of these people are the same people that were announcing before the election that it was going to be a fraudulent election. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. But but then they won, and so now, obviously, it's, it's everything's on the up and up. Yeah. Everything's above board. and because we want. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, where does it go from here? Uh, Trump's filed some lawsuits. There's already been several of them rejected. I was going to say most of them I heard today that there was even more of them thrown out. So yeah. I, mean, I don't I don't even know that he's got that much more um, in that department that he can mm-hmm. do. Um, um, well, you have the uh, attorney, Flynn's attorney, Sidney Powell. Maybe. Is that right? Something like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, she's out there saying, and this is a person that has some credentials and, and she's got a reputation to lose. Yeah. Um, and she's out there saying that they're, you know, that they feel that they have enough evidence that to flip it, yeah. to actually like change the results of the election. And of course, uh, Mike Pompeo got up there and when he was asked about, um, a smooth transition, he said, yeah, I, I'm sure that there will be a true uh, a smooth transition to Trump's second, second term. Second term, yeah, I did hear that. I a heard funny that line. clip, yeah. Um, um, but, I, like, there's... I mean, I don't know if they're... I don't know if they're just making a show if the, or if they really have this kind of confidence in, yeah. in what they have. Um, neither would surprise me, honestly. Oh, I, I think um, it could... Ha- I mean, I think it could go either way. At this point, I, I've pretty well settled into the fact that I think Biden's going to end up be in the one. Yeah. But who knows? I mean, like I had told you the other day, I mean, things could still change. Things could happen. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's a done deal. Um, yeah. I, they were, uh, they were stacking stones on, on Trump's grave before the election even happened. And, yeah. and they're, they're there now. There's no, there's no reviving him from here. Um, I, now I think it's an interesting thought experiment to say, 
if it was proven like unequivocally that there was a tremendous amount of fraud in this election and that Biden won the election because of fraud. Yeah. Like unequivocally. Yeah. Like without question. And um, how many, like who would come out and say, Oh, well in that case, Trump should be reinstated for his second term. I, I just I have like. Do to, you think Chuck Schumer would? No way. <laughs> do you the, think Nancy Pelosi would? All, all Are of, they so concerned about democracy that they tout all the time that no, they would go along? It's all with that? about power. Yeah. It's no, it's nothing but that. And even if you step it down to people like you and me, mm-hmm. um, your normal citizens, the people who were never Trumpers would never concede it. It, yeah. it would always be. You know, it was stolen from Biden, you mm-hmm. know, and the same way with the when um, Biden does end up going in, the the Trump people are going to be the same way. You know, mm-hmm. this either way it goes, this election was is going to be stolen as far as half the country is concerned. Yeah. Well, and you were saying to me the other day, you thought that it would go to the Supreme Court, that it would be decided by the Supreme Court. And um, I don't Maybe. know if you're still if you're still with that, but no, um, not particularly. They, this is my opinion on it is that they will not overturn the election results yeah. period no matter what yeah the supreme court does not want to be seen as having decided the next president yeah regardless I mean, they um, they have done it before though i mean they did it in bush gore no they didn't um that actually that's that's kind of a weird story because people remember this wrong um what happened was that they uh, you know, Gore's people demanded a recount. They got a recount. It came in favor of Bush. They demanded another recount. They got another recount. It came in favor of Bush. And they continued to demand recounts. And the Supreme Court said, that's enough. Yeah. We've done this. Yeah, it's but, over. You can't challenge it anymore. We've, we've, but, we've been through the challenge. They just stopped like a perpetual recount. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. they didn't decide the election. They just, they decided that it was time to stop challenging it because they'd come up with the same results multiple times. But didn't the media come out full force in, in favor of Gore in that election? I don't remember. I mean, I, I seem to remember some, like a bunch of headlines of, you know, Gore I mean, wins, I would suspect so. I, I think so, yeah. but I, I mean, I don't remember really. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember well enough to to quote anything specifically, but I just seem to remember that being like the big thing was like the the media had pretty well declared it the same way they have now with Biden. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that was kind of the tipping point when the Supreme Court stepped in. Yeah. But again, the Supreme Court didn't decide. The Supreme Court just put an end to the challenges. To the challenges. I got To the challenges that had failed. Yeah. Uh, Like it wasn't even... Like, oh, well, you know, it's kind of questionable. And they said, that's enough of this. It was like, well, no, your challenge has failed multiple times. Yeah. You got to stop. Gotcha. You're, you're done. Yeah. All right. <laughs> like, it's over. <laughs> yeah. Throw in the towel. Yeah. Um, But that, I mean, that's not what we're talking about here. I don't think. I mean, it may come to that, too. I mean, that may yeah. be exactly how it ends. They're like, okay, you've you've had your challenge. Yeah. Um, you couldn't prove your point and you're, it's over now. Stop challenging. Yeah. yeah. Um, th- which is, I, I guess a reasonable way for it to end or, or a, a, a reasonably likely way for it to end. Um, what I see 0% chance of is really almost under any circumstances, the Supreme court overturning the results as they've been presented. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the, I think the argument and I'm no legal scholar, so, <laughs> but I think the argument would be is that there, that it shows enough corruption that it's some way, some path there, you get it to the Supreme court through that. There was just this overwhelming corruption or something. I don't think that they want to do that either. I, no. I, I think that that's, I mean, I don't think that there's a lot of will for that to, and I don't, like I said, I don't even know that there's a legal path for that. Um, I, I don't know what it would look like. Yeah. You know. I don't know. But I, I had said in the beginning that <clears throat> I, Trump can do all of this he wants. I, I said, like I say, I don't, not, nothing ever changes from this. Mm-hmm. Like you, you don't, you, you don't win an election in the courts. Like, I mean, yeah. he can do all of this he wants. I've never really seen a path to victory that way. Yeah. I mean, sorry, everybody that's, that's upset about this. Biden is your next president briefly before Kamala Harris. Yeah. 
And I think that the time that Biden's in there will be entertaining. So I, I look forward to that. Like, I don't look forward to the policies or any of that. But I think just having Biden in front of a camera day in and day out will be funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that you're right. I think that, uh, that Kamala Harris uh, provides some comic relief as well. Um, I, I know that the No Agenda show has revived Drunk or Not Drunk with uh, Kamala Harris, <laughs> right. um, which has been pretty entertaining. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. The whole thing's kind of a farce anyway, no matter who's in the office. So it's true. Uh, yeah. You know, we'll we'll see. Um, there's, but the I, I guess a, a point to make though is that the press doesn't decide, um, and, and in fact the decision is over. Really, December fourteenth. That's when the electoral college casts their ballots. Yeah. Um, in the states. Uh, and then the Congress counts those ballots on January 6th, and that's the last chance for anybody to appeal. Yeah, and so that's that's kind of when we'll see the stuff wrap up. And yeah, and I mean, but that's just like two weeks before the inauguration. The inauguration. Yeah. So, um, yeah. but I would say that w- once the electoral ca- college casts their ballots, that's kind of the end. It's the done deal. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then. And then what? Or actually, I guess between now and then what? And then and then what? <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, now there has been some some interesting uh, stuff going on. Um, Trump has fired the a bunch of the Pentagon staff um, and hired people that he probably should have hired long ago. Yeah. When um, the like he started. <laughs> yeah. Um, if he really wanted to keep his campaign promises of winding the wars down, mm-hmm. because he talked about that a lot on the campaign trail. Yeah. Um, and there was good reason to believe that he was serious. Mm-hmm. And then he got in office and he started putting people in place. And it was like, yeah, he didn't mean none of that at all. <laughs> yeah. Or he just actually, I think that that's the big failure of Trump's presidency. I think that he probably did mean it, but he isn't familiar enough with, with the, the people. System. Yeah, or, well, and the people and, and the, the people, people involved yeah. um, to know who it was that he could choose with a conservative leaning that agrees with him that we shouldn't be involved in these wars to put in positions to make it happen. That is probably um, a good way to look at it, because, I mean, he did. He, he wanted to make sure he picked conservative conservative people. Mm-hmm. And there's just not I mean, there's not like an abundance of them that are anti-war. There mm-hmm. are some. There's plenty. Yeah. But they're not predominant names yeah and people that that he would have had recommended to him mm-hmm. well um, they, he definitely wouldn't have had those people recommended to them uh, well he would have to go out in washington he would have to go out and find them mm-hmm. and and, and he doesn't just, read enough <laughs> yeah and trump's just not intelligent enough to do that <laughs> yeah he, he doesn't read enough yeah. and i don't think it's intelligence i think it's yeah. i think it's interest and um engagement yeah um he, you know, he's just not familiar enough with this group. I mean, yeah. he could have gone and like poached the Cato Institute, or he could have talked to Rand Paul. Well, yeah, like Rand Paul would have set him straight. Yeah, like. <laughs> probably could have said, "Here, here's the guys that you need if yeah. you want to get this done." Exactly. I, I mean, there has been some, uh, and of course, you know, he did pick some people early on, um, including Flynn, yeah. uh, that could that at least agreed with him on part of the withdrawal plans. Yeah. Um, some places that he didn't want to be involved in that they agreed with. Uh, but they were, they were attacked immediately and brought down, um, by whomever, yeah. um, you know, the FBI or who, whoever. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and so there, I think that he actually did start off right in some cases, but the people that he picked, that may have been able to succeed early on were brought down and, and, um, and yeah. pulled out of the administration. Yeah, and then he was true. left with, uh, you know, these, the Pompeo's and Bolton and Mike. Yeah. And how, uh, how Bolton ever ended up anywhere in that yeah. mix is just beyond. Well, and me. Trump used to say, like, I like to have people that disagree with me around. Um, but it's fine, but yeah. And just think about Esper, um, who just lost his job. Yeah. Uh, Esper has been going around after the fact saying that they'd been lying to Trump about how many troops they had in Syria. Yeah. Like, like oh, well, we just kept telling him a, a lower number so he wouldn't realize how involved we still were because 
Yeah. Like, no, this is the commander in chief. And, and, and that should frighten everybody out there, no matter what side you're on well, or whatever. Like to think that the military is uh, like the whole lying point about what we're doing. Yeah. To the civilian leadership of the military. Like the whole point of the president is to have a civilian leader of the military. Yeah. So the military doesn't grow beyond control and become really dangerous. You want civilian control of the military to decide, uh, you know, to keep it in check is the idea. Well, um, but obviously he, that's not happening. And if the military people are lying to the civilian leadership, the elected leadership, yeah. um, and so that they can the keep commander in chief. Yeah. Like, so they can maintain war. Like <laughs> they can maintain their own agenda, regardless of what the people of this country want. Yeah. That's a problem. Oh, absolutely. like a real serious problem. And I can't understate how big a problem well, that is. And I don't, I just don't understand how that's not classified as treason. Like how, how, how is that not treason by definition? I mean, you're, you're misleading the, the commander in chief. Because the people that could do something about it won't. Yeah, exactly. No. They, and that's, that's, yeah. that's what it boils down to because <laughs> if it was the other way around, like they would, they'd hang him in the streets. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, just think of uh, how they're approaching this right now. The threat that Trump might actually withdraw from Afghanistan or Syria or Somalia. Like half this oh. country doesn't know that we're still fighting in Somalia. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> and, uh, and that this is, you know, th he's accused of all kinds of terrible things there. Um, that, uh, you know, uh, okay. So there's the, well, the Dave Smith bit. And I, Definitely got to stick this clip in um, uh, where Dave Smith's talking about the article uh, where they're, you know, the this great concern over Trump ending these wars and that this behavior is dictatorial. <laughs> that this right. is dictator like behavior, what he what he's doing here. And um, Dave Smith had a had a really nice take on it. So, yeah, let's give let's, it a listen. Let's throw that in. Is, is hasn't it always been the fear? like the deepest fear in America that someday a dictator could rise and pull us out of disastrous wars. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, Come I on. like when I heard that the oh, first time man. I just laughed out loud. That's, that's just too <laughs> the great fear of America. <laughs> right. <you know. laughs> um, so, uh, you know, the, the idea that he might actually withdraw is, is really frightening to these people. So, I was talking to my aunt who's a, a radical progressive. Well, radical may be too strong a word, but definitely a progressive. <laughs> definitely a progressive. She's a, yeah, she's a Bernie bro. Um, the other night and she was going on about the Lincoln project. And I was like, I don't even know what the Lincoln project really is. And so I went and looked it up and it's a bunch of Republican, a bunch of anti-Trump Republicans that think that, you know, that we're doing everything that they could to put an end to his presidency. And, so I read through, they had a uh, press release. Well, actually, it's just like an op-ed. There's this big op-ed in the New York Times when they were announcing themselves. I guess this was like 2017 or something. It was, so it was a while after back. took office. Yeah. yeah. Um, where they were saying what they're about. And it became really clear to me really quickly that re what this was about is maintaining the this foreign policy, this imperial foreign Main, policy. Maintaining the war machine. Yeah. Um, and so I, I'm going to quote a bit from the article. Um, they said, uh, Mr. Trump and his fellow, all right, that's another one that gets me. This <laughs> yeah. happened throughout his entire presidency. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it more than once on this podcast yeah. that now I don't have a great respect for the office or whatever, but he does have a title. <laughs> yeah, it is Mr. President. Yeah. Right? It's president Trump or president Mr. President. Trump. Yeah. Mr. Trump is not, the <laughs> does thing. not fit that. Yeah. Time. yeah. <laughs> not but his this office. was, this was done a lot during his presidency. Oh, it was. You never heard people say Mr. Obama. It was, yeah. He, yeah. but whatever. <laughs> I mean, I guess there, you probably did if you hunt around enough, but I, I it certainly yeah. wasn't as prevalent. It wasn't as widespread. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, Sorry, back to the <laughs> article. Um, Mr. Trump and his fellow travelers daily undermine the proposition we as a people have a responsibility and an obligation to continually bend the arc of history toward justice. They mock our belief in America as something more meaningful than lines on a map. Now, first off, that last sentence there. 
Yeah. Does that sound like your average Trump supporter? They mock the idea that America is more meaningful than lines on a map. Does that sound like I'm your average Trump sure supporter? I'm pretty sure they want to like build walls around those lines. Like, I mean, don't they? <laughs> well, like, yeah, but I mean, does. but they certainly see America as something significant as an idea or oh, an yeah. ideal. I mean, oh, absolutely. And, like the idea that that's not what they <laughs> that they mock them for thinking that themselves. No, what they're mocking is the idea that we got to go around and be the police of the world. And yeah. this the the phrase that stuck out to me was the that we have a responsibility and an obligation and i just thought about the the um the r2p proposition the neocon responsibility to protect or yeah. duty to protect that was the other way that they said it you know this whole idea that it's our our job as americans to get involved militarily all over the world to make sure that the right thing is being done yeah when oh. <laughs> we we can we can't we can't manage our own problems. Yeah, exactly. We can't do that at home, <laughs> yeah. you know, much less all over the world. And it doesn't help anybody. We're, no. And, I mean, the, only and the truth is that it's just a, it's just a propaganda anyway, because we're not really that concerned about human rights. That's just no. an excuse to go and protect resources. Exactly. Um, our steel resources. <laughs> yeah. You know, corporate interests and so forth. So uh, like, I, I immediately dismiss this group as exactly the kind of people that I don't want running this country. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, they're apparently they're, they're a thing. Yeah. yeah. And they're really well, happy now dancing in the streets. I bet we, I mean, we, we've talked about it before, but the, the war machine has moved to the left. I mean, that's, yeah. that's really where what's what we're watching. Like the divide yeah. it's, it's, cha there's a change in the parties going on right now. <clears> and a big part of it, is is the war people are going back to the dem are going to the Democrats? Uh, yeah, I mean at, at the upper levels, at the elite well, yeah. levels. Hey, hey, well, um, that's what I mean. And what I would suggest actually is that the that the war party is on both sides. It is at the elite levels, yeah. and the war party is hard to find at the, at the average American levels. Yeah, the the average American is really opposed to all this, and yeah. and that's why Trump got elected in the first place. Yeah. Um, big, big part of it. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, they, there were those studies and I don't know how much stock I, I'm even willing to put into this, but there were those studies that suggested that, um, it came down to several thousand votes in a few counties, uh, that had the highest casualty rates from the terror war. <laughs> oh, wow. I hadn't seen that. Um, but, I mean, that's, that's a, that would be an interesting perspective. Though. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember reading about this years ago, like after the election yeah. and they were saying, Oh, well, you know, the, he turned these few counties from uh, Obama, um, that had voted for Obama and then voted for Trump. I had, and it was I had, by several thousand votes. And these counties were in, you know, these the swing States, Michigan and, um, yeah. I had heard places. some of that, but not not so much that the that the war was the was the deciding factor there to mm -hmm. flip it. Well, who knows? But that yeah. these places did have high casualty, high casualty rates casualty from rates. the terror war. Yeah. yeah. Um, and of course, uh, like if we could get so. This is the hard part, though. Now, so now he's got McGregor. Now, yep. McGregor is an anti-imperialist. He he does not sign on to this idea that we need to be everywhere. Yeah. Um. And he's been very vocal about it. And he doesn't give it a damn what anybody thinks about him. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. he's he, willing he's, to get up and say he's going in with an agenda. Yeah. And um. And this guy, he's you know by all accounts, he is uh he's brilliant and focused and hard nosed. And he's hard to argue with uh, because he's earned a great deal of respect within the military the establishment. Yeah. Um, he is the, the hero of the tank war of Iraq War I, um, where, you know, the U.S. forces destroyed 80-something Iraqi tanks in the, in the tank battle, and they lost, and the U.S. lost a single soldier. Wow. Wow. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah. That's um, impressive. I mean, he's, he's supposed to be, you know, this like tactical genius and, um, and you know, a deep thinker, but the, you know, like I said, he's got credentials. And so he's yeah. he, like, you can't just go, it's this hard guy's, to just say that, oh, well, he's just, he's never been there. Yeah. yeah. Or that he's a wimp or not, you know, yeah, I mean, there's exactly. no, yeah. Like he's he's been he's there. He's got the background, and yeah. he's won. <laughs> yeah, and he wants to leave. <laughs> and he wants to leave. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, by all accounts, if anybody can pull it off, he can. Yeah. But it's an uphill battle. 
Oh, without and question. It, you know, Scott Horton keeps saying, why didn't he do this in June? Yeah. <laughs> and right. where, where could we be now if he'd done this in June? Like we could be out of Afghanistan, out of Syria, out of Somalia. Um, and I'm pretty confident that if that yeah. were the case, yeah. Trump would have been reelected in a landslide. I think he would have. I absolutely think he would have. <clears throat> and it was, it is incredible because he was talking about some of this stuff then. Mm-hmm. Like he was like the, the subject came up multiple times about leaving Afghanistan and different things yeah. stood in the way and he didn't do it. Mm-hmm. If he had just like done it, he, he would be in a much better position today. Yeah. And he would have, we forced... would be in a much better position because that would have happened. <laughs> yeah. Well, and he would have forced Biden to stand up there during the campaign and say, no, we need to go back and to campaign war. Campaign for war. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, um, missed opportunity. Uh, I don't know why he didn't, if he didn't care enough or he didn't think it was important enough, or if Maybe. he's got advisors saying, you know, you can't do this because you'll lose all this money. Um, that could be a factor and it. You know, I, I don't think that it was a factor that he thought it was a loser at the ballot box, because I think that's one of the reasons he's always been so hardcore about it because he knew it was a winner at the ballot box. Yeah. So I don't think that that was it. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. You know? And the, the propaganda is real right now. So, um, the, I know on all the major news networks tonight, the big story was, you know, well, if we pull out of these wars and we shut down the anti-terrorist stuff we're doing, that we're going to end up with, um, with another 9-11. Like that's, that's that, like, I'm telling you, that was, that's, that was like the theme of the newscast tonight. Yeah. Like was it's like 9-11's they don't even, coming again. Yeah. You know? It's like they don't even realize that 9-11 came because we never left Iraq. Yeah. Well, that's just <laughs> it. Like that's, but the. the and for those that don't know, the entire Clinton presidency, we were still dropping bombs in Iraq. Well, and that's what 9-11 was about. Like, mm-hmm. it was about getting us to leave these places. Mm-hmm. Like Get I out mean, of Saudi Arabia. Yeah, exactly. It was a bunch of Saudis and Egyptians saying, get out yeah. of the Holy Land. Yeah. We don't want your bases in our Holy Holy Land. Exactly. Um, so the idea of us leaving is going that, that it's going to create more terrorism, but it goes back to the propaganda that was put out at the time. And I remember because I bought into it at the time, um, pretty heavy that, you know, we got to fight them over there so we don't have to fight them over here. Yeah. Um, But the truth of it is that if we weren't over there, we wouldn't be fighting them at all. Exactly. And I know that now, but like I say, in 2001, 2002, Mm -hmm. that's, I mean, that's where my mom was because that's where the propaganda was. And I just never saw past it. Yeah. Um, I was listening to, Oh, I can't even remember who I think it was Doug, uh, Bondo, um, who was talking about North Korea and was pointing out that, um, you know, North Korea isn't threatening, you know, uh, Belgium or, um, you know, any, or, or any of these, like the U S is the country that they're threatening over and over again, that they're going to, that they're going to attack, that they're going to bomb, et cetera. Yeah. Um, not the Western world or anything like that. And yeah. why is that? Because we're there. Yeah. We're there. If we weren't there, they wouldn't be threatening us. Exactly. Um, and so, you know, it's the same thing. But back to uh, back to McGregor. Um, while he has the clout yeah. uh, and um, he has the determination, um, it's still it's still going to be a fight because yeah. while you know they can't um, or they probably won't, I, they could actually, I suppose. But while they probably won't like openly defy him. Yeah. Be a lot of feet dragging. Yeah. Um, uh, here's a, here's a little, uh, clip from, uh, Mark Perry on the Scott Horton show talking about exactly this. Donald Trump is discredited and his writ is, uh, is pretty weak right now. And, you know, if you're Doug McGregor, despite all of your experience and knowing your way around Washington, you show up in the Pentagon suddenly with two months left, they can really give you the runaround. Yeah, it's just, just give them the runaround. Yeah, well, that's just <laughs> it because the people in the building at the Pentagon they don't want to do this, at least not overall. Yeah, like I mean, the people that they're firing and swapping out with are the people who want to do it, but the people that actually have to do the legwork, mm-hmm. they don't want to do this. Yeah, this so, is a guaranteed so, income for them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, like, why, why would they do that? Yeah. So, well, um, it would be interesting to see if you if he is successful in getting us out of anywhere. Um, 
Afghanistan, Syria, Somalia, any of those places, yeah. and then what Biden does when he comes back into office. Now he's already said, uh, Biden's already said that they're going back into Syria with yeah. the in, with the intent of regime change, of getting Assad out of there. Yeah. I, I just am thinking about it today when they were talking about on the news about the withdrawals and, and, you know, the number of troops that they're planning on pulling and whatnot. I couldn't help but think is how easy or how difficult, easy or difficult it would be for Biden to just quietly move those troops back in mm-hmm. without like the public really knowing a whole lot about it. Well, um, y- you know that there are some reporters that you can depend upon to to give you this information. Yeah, they they couldn't do it entirely in secret. They may not report it, and they may have the mainstream media behind them in in terms of not reporting it. We'll know about it, but, well, but that's kind of what yeah. I'm getting at. Is so like me and you and the people that follow this will know, mm-hmm. and will of course we will still be saying the same thing we're saying now. We'll be yeah. condemning it or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. But your mainstream media, how much are they gonna? pick up on it and report yeah. on it. And before you know it, you've got 10,000 troops in the country, you know, mm-hmm. and, and it's like, why, why is, why is this going on? You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. We're, we're actually like, it's, um, it'll, be once a, again, it'll be a surprise to people when they find out that we've got all of these troops everywhere. Yeah. And that we're aligning ourselves with Al Nusra, yeah. um, in, in Syria again, to try and take down Assad. Yeah. Um, but the whole, uh, like, this is it. It's this, this so schizophrenic, um, this foreign policy and it's not just Trump Biden's foreign policy is just a schizophrenic. Oh. I want to go back into a Syria to remove Assad, but I want to sign a, a treaty again with Iran, Assad's ally. <laughs> oh, and I want to be really antagonistic with Russia because Russia is the seat of evil in the world. Yeah. Um, but I want to sign this treaty with, uh, their good friends in Iran. Yeah. Um, like how is it that you want to, uh, how do you think be antagonistic with more- Syria? peace how does yeah, any of well, this well that's that's, that's not that's not the goal that's though. not the goal i know it's not but i'm just saying if to to market it to the people you have to be saying that, that we're better off because of this mm-hmm. and when you start really digging in and getting into the weeds with it you realize really quick that yeah. we're not making things better here like we're not creating an environment for peace yeah but there's propaganda is powerful that's just it. Um, propaganda is powerful. I had an argument with my mom like right before we started recording about Iran's nuclear program. And yeah. she is 100% convinced that Iran was building nuclear weapons and that it is terribly dangerous for us to enter the um, another nuclear treaty with Iran. Yeah. And, she, I mean, she's, you're, you're she's not wrong. Con- you're not going <laughs> like, to convince her otherwise. But, but. yeah, you, you can't even provide enough information yeah. to to overcome um, the propaganda that has been created through mainstream media for decades. Yeah. Well, um, the, the world will if, be a safer place if if Assad has been removed. Now, he was our buddy just 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, we like put our him in good power, friend. didn't we? Didn't we? Um, I, no, we didn't put Assad in power. Okay. But we uh, empowered him in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, and we were transferring... Um, prisoners from the Iraq, oh, that's from the right. terror wars, over to that. him to torture. That's right. Um, yeah. Instead of us torturing them, because we only had so much room in our torture facilities. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, like he was our buddy. Um, of course, Putin also was our buddy. Like we were working together to uh, to defeat Al Qaeda, yeah. and we would still be if anybody had any sense. Yeah. Um, but we don't. Instead, we're allying with Al Qaeda in Syria to take down Assad. Yeah. And, f- and, and for what? And fighting them on the other side of the line in Iraq. Yeah. Like, it's, it makes no sense. Yeah. Um, and it's because I, I think, you know, I think that the real goal is just chaos. Yeah. Create as much chaos as you can so you can create as much of a market for weapons. weapons. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's kind of what it boils down to. Yeah. And well. It's kind of always been that way. <laughs> Uh, before we wrap, wrap up, let's, let's move to something else. Um, let's talk about COVID. <laughs> oh, yay. Woo, so, COVID. <laughs> um, all right. A couple of things. Uh, one is I finally like really witnessed one of those weird interactions with people about masks, um, oh, really? the other day in the store. Yeah. Uh, and the lady in front of me in line had a mask on, but she had it pulled down like under her chin <clears throat> while she was checking out. And the, um, the girl at the checkout counter, um, 
It was like, your mask isn't on. <laughs> and she said, I, I have a mask on. She said, your mask isn't on. And she said, well, I'm, I have some trouble breathing. So, yeah. and then, <laughs> and she like turned to me and I don't know, the whole, the whole interaction was just, was just weird. Yeah. And, um, and I, I was going to say like, actually the mandates here don't actually say how you wear the has mask. To, yeah. It doesn't say it has to be wore properly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you could have it on top of your head, like a yarmulke and it, yeah. it meets the, the requirement. requirement. Like you're yeah. wearing a mask. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. I mean, there's, there's some assumptions there, I think. <laughs> um, but, uh, anyway, uh, you know, the whole thing, um, she was, they were both antagonistic. Yeah. Like there was, there was fault on both sides. The, the girl behind the counter was ruder than she needed to be and pointing it out. And the response from the lady wasn't just, well, I have breathing problems. Actually. She said something like, I have trouble breathing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That's Which how is, it always goes. Yeah. And then it just escalates from there. Yeah. And so then, um, when I left the store, the, the lady, um, the customer was outside talking to another employee, presumably a manager. And she stopped me and she said, wasn't that girl uh, hateful to me about the mask? I said, well, I think hateful is kind of a strong word. <laughs> yeah. um, but, and what I said is, well, you know, this is a state run store and they have, they have rules and you don't know that lady behind the counter after eight months of propaganda could be terrified that she's going to die because and of you. More than likely is like that's yes. well. I, and I say that like, so I work in public in retail. So I, mm -hmm. I see it and deal with this firsthand quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And it's one of two things, just like you said, there are plenty of employees out there that are living in fear right now because they're just, they don't understand what's going on and they're just scared because they're, they're getting all of this information thrown at them and they don't know what to think about any of it. But there's also a lot of the the power hungry cashier. That, mm -hmm. Like I can tell you what to do. I can tell yeah. my customers how to behave now. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I mean, it, it could have been either of those. Yeah. Um, but those both exist. Mm -hmm. So Well, I see it. And of course, you know, the, the answer is what you told your people too, which is, oh, it is. You know, you're not the mask police. We're we are not the mask police. Like if, if it's just it's we put the signs up and because we're mandated by the state to do so, mm -hmm. um, and the company also wants us to do so. But the mm -hmm. company came out really strong with that. We're not going to stop people at the door. We're not going to engage in this. If somebody comes in without a mask, let them be. Just assume yeah. they have a medical condition. Yeah. And as far as HIPAA is concerned, we're not supposed to ask about that. Exactly. So yeah, that's the other thing is that yeah. HIPAA says that you can't ask. Yeah. So like, yeah, just it's, the, it's the same thing when people bring pets into the store. I do mm -hmm. the same thing there because oh, it, I hate that. I, <laughs> I, I hate it too. It, it annoys and I love animals. Like mm -hmm. it's not that I, I just don't bring them in the store, Yeah. <laughs> but, but I do this. I, I tell my people the same thing with that. Like you don't know if that's a service animal mm -hmm. and legally we're not supposed to ask. Yeah. So well, the, that's the real problem with these kind of mandates is that um, that it it sets people against each other. Yeah, it it makes everybody into the mask police, or at least they think so. Yep. And so all it does is result in a bunch of antagonistic interactions between normal people. Yeah, yeah, that are just unnecessary. Like this was yep. totally unnecessary. Well, and this one's particularly bad as far as just like splitting people into groups mm -hmm. because like. Everybody can look at you and know which group you're in. Yeah, that's like true. Like, if you're not wearing a mask, you're in the non-mask group and yeah. vice versa. Like, yeah. I mean, it just, it's a, like, I don't know. I could definitely see, like, a civil war fought over masks because <laughs> it's so easy to, no, I mean, I, I exaggerate. But yeah. I, you it's know. like your uniform, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but that's part mm -hmm. of your uniform. Which side are you on, you yeah. know? Well, um, uh, along these same lines, and this is how, if... Of course, one of Biden's other things is that there's going to be a nationwide mask mandate day one Yep. yep. Um, when he comes into office. Enforcement's going to be weird. But here's, like, this is how they get you, um, is things like this. Ticketmaster has said uh, that they're considering, um, in order for you to buy a ticket, you have to show a, um, a negative COVID test within so many hours of the, of the event. 
Oh, wow. Um, That's a high bar. Yeah, or something else. I, I can't remember exactly. But, but essentially, it, but you it's had crazy, to, though, yeah, yeah, you had to show in order for them to sell you a ticket. Yeah, you had to show that you um, you were relatively clean, like Fortunate, relatively risk free. Fortunately, though, this is one of those areas where the market will will fix this. Well, but this is the problem, actually. Like I said, this is how they get to you. So this is a thing that Ticketmaster probably won't actually do. No. Not on their own because yeah. it costs too much money. And yeah. what, you, you could sell a ticket or not sell a ticket, and they would yeah. rather sell a ticket. Well, absolutely. The problem is that the venues could be mandated by the state by the agencies. State. Ah, follow you. Yeah. Well, and that's something. Forcing Ticketmaster to do this because they have to comply. They, they have to the, sell for the venue. Yeah. And the venue has to comply with the state mandates. Yeah. That's how they get that, to So it. they're backdoor. So yeah. they're, yeah. they're essentially creating a situation where you have to prove your COVID negativity um, in order to participate in society. Well, what's, what's even more scary is that right now it's the COVID test, but it's going to end up being prove that you've been vaccinated. Yeah. Because that's, be that's where vaccine. this is heading. Cause the vaccine's not far down the road. Now. The vaccine passport. Um, that's, that's what we're heading towards. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, unless we all stand up yeah. and say, hell no. Yeah. No, I, and I'll be I'll be on that team because yeah. I don't know how well you know me as far as getting shots in general. <laughs> yeah, but like I don't do shots. Like I definitely don't do shots like vaccines and crap. Mm. So <laughs> yeah, um, I mean we. Uh, so one of the the things that the reasons that this podcast is is because we believe that you should be free to make your own choices about your life as long as it doesn't interfere with other people's ability to do the same. Yeah. Right. Um, that's the, that's a simple, it's easy, you yeah. know, simple definition of, of what we advocate. Um, now me not getting the vaccine doesn't prevent you from doing anything you want to do in it life. It doesn't make your vaccine not effective. Right. <laughs> like that's, that's really what it boils down to. Yeah. Right. So, and of course <laughs> then there's all these weird things about masks and so forth that like, do you see, um, uh, Lightfoot, uh, oh, the, in Chicago, Chicago, yeah, um, where she was uh, out in the street, of course, she, celebrating you know, like, Biden's win. Yeah, it's celebrating Biden's win. Yeah. Bunch of people packed together, yep. um, and but then there's all these lockdowns going on in Chicago, like but, the but, next day. Yeah, like but she was questioned even by MSNBC <laughs> about you know about this crowd of people. Yeah. And she said, well, if you'll, if you'll notice that, um, when you look at that shot, everybody's wearing a mask. Well, if everybody's wearing a mask, then shouldn't we just be able to wear masks and do our Thanksgiving as usual? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, well, and the hypocrisy's everywhere. Like it's on full display because mm -hmm. Pelosi's in, in the hot water right now with, I don't remember the exact details, but I was reading something about it today is that she's having like a big Thanksgiving thing, I guess at the, um, at the house or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. One of the chambers of Congress or something. Um, yeah, they're supposed to have a big Thanksgiving thing, but yet people in their homes aren't allowed to have their family over. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, and Gavin Newsom had something. That's the guy out in California. The California. Yeah. Um, Same thing. Oh, yeah. all kinds of mandates. Like we need to print that out one day and read it because it's yeah. ridiculous. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, um but it's but it's the hypocrisies everywhere. It's you know do what you're told and mm -hmm. don't look don't look at what we're doing. Yeah. You know? Well, um, there was something else she said in that interview. I wish I could remember. I should have written it down or or taken. A I, clip I heard or about the incident, but I hadn't heard her um, interview. I don't, I uh, there was that. something else she said that uh, that the again the response was oh she said um, well that gathering would have happened whether I'd been there or not. I said, well, yeah, well, so would my Thanksgiving. But yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> In fact, I don't want you there. <laughs> yeah, you're not invited. Don't take that as an invitation. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, the same argument could be made. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's just like you can see in these people that they don't really believe it, that it's, it, it's really just a power grab. Yeah. And I'm so tired of arguing about it with people. Like, I understand that people are scared, but... This is this is a way of controlling you. Fear is a really powerful way of controlling oh, people. Without question. And I just want to kind of make a note here for people to something to just kind of be on the lookout for. So right now this is all handled state by state. 
So like the states and, and it's not good. I'm like, I'm not okay with states locking down and, or mm-hmm. mandatory lockdowns. If you want voluntary lockdown, I don't care. But mm-hmm. um, I, I have a problem with the state mandate and stuff like that. But Fauci was out there today and a bunch of the other ones. Um, there is a push for Biden to instate, insta, institute national lockdowns when he becomes president. Yeah, well, he um, said he's going to. Well, he said he's going to, and the 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 I think power, he's back for that a little bit, but yeah, but Fauci was out there hardcore, particularly Fauci. He was the one that I that I know of the most that was out there pushing for a, a I forget exactly how he worded it, but like a a nationwide effort or a unified mm-hmm. effort. And the, the, and specifically saying that handling the state by state is not the right answer. Yeah. That it needs to be handled from the top down. And which, as everybody that listens to this podcast knows, goes absolutely against what we stand for here. Yeah. Because that, that's that's not a way to run a government. Is mm-hmm. is bigger is not better when it comes to your government. You want yeah. the most local government taking care of you because they know the needs of the area. Um, yeah. But well, that's that's not what they were preaching, and so it's just something to be on the lookout for, you know, as Biden comes into office. Just for those of you that are mathematically minded, it is a truism that government and liberty are inversely proportional. Yeah. <laughs> the more one you have, the less of the other. Yeah. Oh, without question. So that seems like a good place to wrap. Um, so we'll we'll go ahead and shut it down for until next time we can do this, uh, which will be whenever we can do this next. Yeah, um, I'm not so even sorry try to We're... try to make a guess at when we'll like I say. Yeah, I I know that I know that schedules help us too. Like the oh, listenership is better when we have a regular schedule, but it just can't be done right now. So it's either you know miss scheduled times or just get it out there when we can. So. Um, we apologize to everybody for any waits that may occur. If you're like sitting on the edge of your seat, waiting for the next waiting episode the next of the Liberty Mike, <laughs> yeah. you'll get it. It's coming. I, I just we're not going anywhere. When. Yeah. We're not going anywhere. Yeah. Um, this has done nothing but cost us money and we're still doing it after <laughs> almost two years. So exactly. like we're, we're, we're staying around. Yep. Um, but, and we'll be as consistent as we can, but the, you know, life keeps getting in the way. Um, Things and it'll get better. Yeah. We'll eventually get... it'll be, eventually we'll be back to the new normal. Yeah, the new normal. Oh, yeah. don't say it, man. <laughs> um, so uh, we'll be back when we're back. I'll see you when I see you. See, that's one of those. Ah, yeah, one of, one of yeah tautologies that I hate. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know we're available on iTunes, Podbean, uh, YouTube. Um, like, subscribe, share, distribute, tell your friends. Um, we're also available on Facebook. And, oh, I mean, yeah, we're, yeah, exactly. (laughs) For as long as they allow us on their platform. Yeah. You can say that about all those places. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll be back when, uh, next we can. And, uh, when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try and stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm -hmm.